The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Hello and welcome in to week number one of the Mike Clowney Show. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, your team tested in week one on the road against a top 10 team, fall to 10th ranked West Georgia by a final score of 38 to 7. Uh, but the feeling, at least after uh, a night's sleep to let the, the game stew, stew uh, some good things out of a 31-point loss, as strange as it may seem. Yes. Uh, probably part of that is how talented and good West Georgia is. That's a national title contender. Uh, what you after a sleep? What do you see from your team that you're pleased with? Yeah, I think number one, I think with this group, it'll, it'll always go back to their attitude, their resilience. Like you know, they this this, this you know, I think this is one of those teams you get you know not much in, in your lifetime of coaching. You know, from the standpoint of like, you know, they kind of get it in a sense of working together, going together. They get it in a sense of, you know, like, hey, we understand that, you know, that wasn't exactly what we wanted to be, but we can get that picture at some point if we continue to work. So I think that's probably like still the bright spot. You know, as a coach, the thing that allows you to do is come in in the morning and know, hey, guys, we just got to get some things fixed on the field. You know, we aren't sitting around coaching attitudes all day. Well, that was a West Georgia team that returned four off their four starters on the offensive line, returned a record-setting quarterback, and you look internally, uh, you've got an offensive line that has played a combined uh, 23 games here at Carson Newman, period. Uh, you've got two receivers that were making uh, their first appearances. You had a quarterback that, due to injuries, his first collegiate action. When you compare those measuring sticks, how nice is it to see, mm -hmm. hey, this is what it takes to be a, a title contender? Yeah, that's, we actually talked about that at halftime. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, they're in title contention and, you know, with a team that's been playing together for a long period of time, you know, and we're coming over here, got a group of guys, that, well, they got guys that played together for the first time too, but, you know, the majority of their roster, you know, they played together, and the majority of ours have it. And so, you know, the fact that, you know, you know, we go out and, you know, we felt like, you know, there's some things there. I think our kids were, you know, weren't intimidated by the game at all. Like, we went out and played. You know, we wound up making some mistakes that we have to get fixed. But I think, you know, we talked about, you know, going and getting those mistakes fixed and finding out what type of football team we really have is something that I think, you know, we have a chance to really, really look forward to. Last season, and I, I hope we don't revisit last year much, but it felt like at times you just couldn't move the ball against teams of a West Georgia's caliber, or even a little bit less caliber. Uh, that wasn't true last night. You moved the ball. Now, was it consistent for 60 minutes? No, but uh, let's face it, the teams for Carson Newman over the years have had trouble at times moving the ball consistently against top 10 foes, but you move the ball. So it's like, it's, it's that fun, it's that balance between, you know, being able to consistently move the football, which, which we have to be able to do. You know, the thing that we've been able to do in the past has been able to make some big plays to kind of compensate for the times that we, we weren't able to move the football. And so, you know, I thought we moved the ball some, you know, like do I wish it was a lot more consistent, yes. But I think we left a couple of really big plays out there that we have to make. You know, you score a couple of points there, kind of keep your energy up, keep the score close. I know um, there's a couple passes that we had down the field. You know, one, we get the pass interference called on and get a first down, but we got a guy open and you hope you can score a touchdown there. There's another one we're running wide open and we have to, you know, we, we, we can't get connected on the throw. I think quarterback probably has the guy in his face. I, I don't remember exactly right now, but, you know, if we make that touchdown, then there's another one. And we talked about the pick six. 
um, after the game yesterday, you know, and there's another one. So you can kind of identify the plays that make a big difference in that game. Carson Newman falls on the road to 10th ranked West Georgia. Final score was 38-7. to We'll break things down with the first half when we return after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Sure, we've been around a while. 171 years to be exact. Founded on the banks of a creek. This creek, Mossy Creek. We know the power of a liberal arts-based Christian education and the tremendous potential of what can be found on this campus, within this community. We are found here and here and here and here and also here in the classroom, on the field. We are adventurers, dreamers, believers, passionate and compassionate, curious and clever, driven by a common purpose towards a common goal. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are family on a journey of discovery. I found my passion. I found my calling. I found family. I found a way to lead. I found a place to call my own. I found purpose. There's something for everyone. We are. We are. We are Carson Newman. What will you find? All right, back on the Mike Clowney Show. Carson Newman falls on the road in week one to the 10th ranked West Georgia Wolves, 38 to 7, the final score. Uh, Mike, uh, a first half, really tale of two quarters. First quarter, absolute defensive slugfest. Uh, kept West Georgia off balance, West Georgia kept you off balance, uh, and really one play the difference. A 47 yard third down conversion set the Wolves up for their first score. Uh, a uh, 29-yard Brock Pellegrino field goal. Outside of that, defensive stalemate. What did you see from your team slowing down the Wolves in that opening 15 minutes? You know, that was fun to watch because I thought, you know, our guys, one thing we talked about is communication. I thought they did a good job communicating on the field, and that communication actually eliminates a lot of mistakes. And, you know, as the game goes along, we get a little bit tired, you know, that, the, that start weighing on you a little bit. And so the, the little things are what kind of diminishes first. And so, you know, we have to make sure, like, we communicate the whole game. You know, we get a bust in the coverage to where if we just communicate, you know, like, hey, you know, I have this guy. Then, you know, I think that's something that we get covered, we get off the field, and then, like, you know, we're still, the same thing we just talked about earlier, you know, possibly put yourself in a different football game. Uh, second quarter started a string of six drives for West Georgia where they score on five uh, possessions. Was it communication uh, or was something else in the offing that, you know, sparked the wolves. You know, we kind of, we kind of fell off a little bit in a sense of, you know, missed assignments. Like we've we've got a couple of missed assignments in there because even in those, I mean, we've got a couple of plays where we're playing pretty good. And then with what they do, I mean, they catch the ball in their empty space once a time, a couple of times, and you know, they kind of got you one on one to where if we get a guy that that misses that, then it's you know, it's a foot race to try to get them caught. Um, but you know, a lot of that was the mistakes that we made on them. Uh, personnel, a lot of new faces making their debuts uh, in orange and blue jerseys. Who surprised you? Um, okay, Ivan Corbin at quarterback. I mean, just an athletic guy. You know, he goes down in the game, and you know his resilience and grit to just be able to get back in the game and, and, and finish the game. You know, as the coach, I'm like, you know, like let's just figure out where we're at right now, but you know, he, he, he was out of it about getting back in the football game. Um, and it was probably long done. It was probably the right decision to get back out there play and then get ready to go play again another week. Um, but I thought Zane Whitson's a new guy that hadn't played for us, you know, comes in. I think he performs well. Um, guy that's been here for a while, has been kind of sitting in the wing, waiting for an opportunity. Did everything all off season that he could do to become the best he could be is TJ King. Um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that just kind of turned the corner, was able to make a couple plays in that game yesterday. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, Kate Meeks caught a couple balls offensively. And then, you know, Major Williams defensively at safety had a couple breakups. Um, Dre Williams at, at linebacker is a new guy that, that performed well for us. Like, he's a guy who come in immediately. Like, we watched the first play. Um, we go 11 on 11, and you just see him run. And you're like, man, a kid can run and can play. And so Dre had, did a good job for us yesterday as a new guy. Um, most of the other guys defensively, like they've kind of been around, just had not played. Calvin Clements with the interception, you know, struggled a little bit last year, but to see him be able to make that play to get us off the field in another situation where they're kind of driving down there tight, you know, it was, that was good for us. 
Carson Newman trailed at the halftime break to the West Georgia Wolves, and we take a look at the first half highlights. Beyond third downs, Frost out of the gun on third and five. Once the slant, it's bobbled, it's picked! Callum Clements leaps and grabs a bobbled pass that was intended for L.P. Perry. Clements, Johnny on the spot to go horizontal and snatch the pigskin before it could hit the turf. A highlight real play for the Out of the gun, trips to his wide side right. A single man behind him is Mosley. Give us to him right side. Mosley a stiff arm on Ja'Cory Long. He spins through that tackle, but he won't spin through five other Eagles who swarm him. Back at the 34-yard line over the numbers right side. Elite pursuit by Carson Newman's defensive front to pursue down Mosley. Was right hash at the Carson Newman 34. Under center is Mosley. Now the snap comes back to Frost out of the gun. He throws incomplete to the right side numbers. Major Williams got a paw in before it could reach L.P. Perry at the 30 along the right sideline. And Carson Newman's defense dialed in against a top 10 team on the road. The Wolves on top. Frost from the gun. Takes the shotgun snap, stands in, airs a fade, right side of the end zone, has a man, and he hauls it in. Touchdown, Wolves. Bridges with the over-the-shoulder grab on the right side of the end zone. Hauls in the fade over top of Alonzo Houston. Linebacker on receiver. And Bridges able to snare it to give the Wolves a 9-0 lead on the 19-yard touchdown catch on the fade. Four wide set to the wide side right for Harrison Frost out of the gun. Eagles blitz up the middle. They throw left sideline. Frost has a man wide open. Tay Huff shakes Callum Clements. Juke move right to the 10. And Huff waltzes in. Touchdown Wolves. Frost 39 yards on the pitch and catch. Huff left uncovered on the left sideline. Then he makes Callum Clements miss to cap the final 10 yards to the house. Wolves up 16-0. He's in the game at quarterback for the Eagles. Second drive for the freshman from NTSU. Play fake. He throws Westfield. Hits him in stride. Complete the 40. Westfield is stiff arm and he's dragged down across midfield. Down at the 49 yard line by Robert Carter. There you go Michael Watchring. Right on cue. 27 yards through the air for Braxton Westfield to the 49 of West Georgia. And the Eagles across the 50. Well, the Wolves' defense had not been threatened all game, so the safeties come up on the play. Whitson takes the snap, gives on a counter to King. King's into the second level. He's got the first down and more. Across the 10 and 5. King! Yes, sir! Touchdown! Carson Newman! T.J. King on his fifth career carry. 34 yards, and the Eagles are on the board. 17-6 with 3.57 to play. In the second. All right, those are the first half highlights. Eagles trailed at the break to the West Georgia Wolves. Mike Clowney, uh, that, that final five-minute stretch, kind of what put the game toward uh, this is going to be a tough come-from-behind effort if you're to rally. And you kind of alluded to it earlier. Had an opportunity. Jalon Walton, literally a ball. Stre I've never seen a guy, the ball is into his stomach, and it was like there was a spring there that just shot it out. Uh, but that's six uh, yeah. the other way if he if he hauls that one in. Yeah. And so, I mean, and like we alluded to, like just that little block, you know, we talked about, you know, eliminating those, that just kind of those little spikes to where things happen, like you don't want them to snowball. I thought our guy, we had that one little moment to where like, um, sideline, getting it back together, kind of understanding where we're at, you know, but like they were able to kind of pull it back together pretty quick. But you, know, you let that happen, and you know now you got your back against the wall. That's what you saw this. Uh, Halftime message to the team. Just we talked about a little bit earlier. The message was, you know, like, hey, you know, um, you know, that's a top ten football team, and we're talking about where we want to go. You know, you know, let's. You know, you hate saying this because it's always weird. But turn the scoreboard off. And let's just go play football and see where we're at uh, when this thing's over with. You know, was really the message, and because it, because it, it didn't want to be about the score in a sense of like of what the score was. I didn't care what the score was. Um, what you want to do is see guys go compete, and that's what we talked about. You know, like just go play the guy in front of you and go compete, 
and then that's excuse to go see if we can get this thing turned around. So we wanted them to focus on competing every single day. To a degree, did you feel like you were playing with house money in this game? Somewhat. I mean, I mean, when you're Carson Newman, I mean, we felt like we were going to go over there and win football games. Yeah, Carson too, but, um, it's, but, but to a degree, I mean, there, there is some leverage there in them being, you know, ranked number 10. And so there is, you know, a great opportunity there. And I think that's why a lot of times you really want to play good people on the front end to figure out where you're at so that you can figure out how to get to where you need to be. And so, like, that was kind of the approach we took to it. And we didn't really talk about them a whole lot. Carson Newman drops one on the road to the West Georgia Wolves, 10th ranked team in the country. We'll break down the second half after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Trilight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at Trilight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit trilight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at Trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Back on the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman drops its season opener to the 10th ranked West Georgia Wolves by a final score of 38 to 7. Mike's second half uh, moved the ball uh, pretty well. Had some early struggles in the third quarter with back to back three and outs. Uh, but the offense kind of found its groove there uh, as the game wore along. Didn't have points to show for it because uh, of a turnover but had some, some lengthier drives against uh, the Gulf South's number two def defense from a year ago. Uh, what did it take for the offense to, to find its footing? You know, I think, you know, Coach personally, I thought this offensive staff did a good job of getting guys over and kind of communicating, like, exactly what was going on. Um, they made a couple of adjustments. Like, we were getting, we were really struggling, you know, picking up the backside, backside linemen. You know, try to be able to do a good job of getting that seal. You know, like if you got to play front side, man, you hate to see it get run down, you know, by a guy backside. And then I think we were able to kind of get the ball outside on the perimeter a little bit more, take advantage of some movement stuff that they were doing. A uh, lot of zone read stuff uh, that seemed to work very well. How much of that is just owed to the situation that you have at quarterback between Corbett and Whitson? I think it's something that we've, we've worked on a lot, and both of those guys have done that before, so they've got a good concept of what that looks like. Uh, defensively, uh, you kind of touched on Major Williams. This was also, I hesitate to call it the debut because he's been around, it feels like, for an eternity. Uh, but Frank Lee, finally healthy, finally back in the lineup. Um, he was all over the place as well. What did you see from a former JUCO basketball player that you've <laughs> stuck at linebacker? <laughs> You know, that's where Frank, I think our defense staff did a good job. Like, we felt like we had a talented kid, but trying to find the right place to play him. Um, and then you just watch a couple times they run stretch. And, man, he does a great job of kind of setting the edge, getting it upfield, um, makes a play outside. And then next time he comes back, he's able to make that play inside. And just listen to him come on the sideline and be able to communicate. Like, you know, like, you know, he's outside, but like, yeah, that temptation of ducking back inside. I'm just talking about, you know, how do I get that fixed to close that back down to where, you know, we can force the ball where it needs to be so he can make plays. I was impressed up front defensively pretty much all together. We rolled a lot of guys in and out of the football game, but I thought for the most part against a quality opponent, I thought they held their own. Uh, a, a lot of things, again, feels so weird to say this after a 31-point loss, but a lot of things that weren't there last year uh, are showing up, at least, again, small sample size in this yeah. game, uh, control the ball better, win the time of possession battle. Um, again, 175 yards rushing on the road against a top 10 team returning. Uh, 93 combined starts on its front defensive front. Uh, some things that you didn't do last year, uh, yeah, they didn't lead to a win in this game. But they were they were back in the picture. Yes, and so and that's 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 what we were pushing for. 
you know, you want to go, like we're talking about, go and see on video. You know, now each week we can go say, hey, man, if we can, if we can move these guys up front, if we can control the line against those guys, then you know, majority of people we play, you know, we ought to be able to kind of be able to establish that if we continue to grow. I think getting it on film for linebackers will now be able to see, hey man, these are where your plugs and fits are going to be to where we can play a little bit more cohesive. You know, I think it gives us a really good chance. That we're First Newman dropped it to the West Georgia Wolves 38-7. to We take a look at the second half highlights. Four on 32. Frost back to pass. Four-man rush. Time throws. Middle of the field. That is complete to Anderson with a lot of space. Anderson splitting the hashes. Now moving left, left across the 10 and 5. And Anderson all the way for six. Touchdown, West Georgia. 68 yards through the air on third down. And Harrison Frost has found the end zone four times through the air and is up to 281 yards passing. 30 to seven, Wolves on top. Threw it behind him and that nearly cost him the possession. 58 seconds left, first half. Second and goal from the 10 for the Wolves. Ball between the hashes. Frost from the gun takes the snap at the chest, throws middle of the field, in stride, complete touchdown, Wolves. Zay Britt in stride over the V in Wolves. A 10-yard touchdown catch finishes off a 12-play, 75-yard drive and gives the Wolves a 23-7 lead with 52 seconds left. Those are the second half highlights from Carson Newman's 38-7 defeat to the West Georgia Wolves. When we return on the Mike Clowney Show, debuting a new segment. Stick around. It's after this. All right, back on the Mike Clowney Show. Carson Newman drops it on the road to the West Georgia Wolves, 38-7. to Got something new for you. We're calling it Talon Talk. Michael Watrang here with Braxton Westfield. What's up, everybody? Here with Braxton Westfield. I'm Michael Watrang on our new segment here for the Eagle Sports Network. Play action. Now he dumps over the middle of the field. It's complete to Braxton Westfield. Westfield rolling between the hashes. He's across the 10 and 5, and he takes it the distance. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Braxton, why don't we walk this line here? Uh, you made the decision to come back. What went into that decision after you graduated last year? Well, I got hurt a little bit last season, so that kind of played a big factor into it, and I couldn't leave the team after ending eight games. I wanted to play a full season, so make my last one a good one. So you're pursuing a, an MBA now in sports management. Uh, what's the goal for you when you do uh, finish up your playing days? Well, I want to open up a gym and become a personal trainer mm -hmm. and like do like speed training and all that other stuff, like football training as well. So that, the sport management definitely is going to help that with that. It fits in perfectly into what you want to do. What has your rehab been like? Uh, obviously a very difficult injury for you. What's the rehab process been like? Lots of long days, early mornings, getting my knee bent from the day after I had surgery till uh, we having two treatments a day, great support system. You know, a lot, a lot. It was a very hard injury to get through, honestly. Evans takes, rolls the pocket left, looks to throw, airs it out, Westfield along the right sideline. Westfield goes up, high points it, brings it in, gets his feet down, yes! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Braxton Westfield's ninth catch of the day is a score as Westfield skies over Milliken. So you obviously had a lot of downtime during that where you couldn't necessarily go out and exercise. What does Braxton Westfield like to do in his free time? Well, during the surgery, after the process, I was hanging out with my girlfriend all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was hanging out with my girlfriend, playing the game, probably chilling with my friends. That's it, about it, honestly. So when you look at uh, this upcoming season, getting back onto the field, uh, what's it going to mean to you to be able to strap the pads on and be back on the football field after all you've gone through? This one means a lot more because mm -hmm. obviously I got hurt last year, didn't have a good season, but now I've dropped some weight off and feeling a lot faster so it's gonna be a great season for a lot of people when you look at uh, this field that you're on and the journey that you've been on as well from where you started at James Madison to getting here today how have you grown uh, during that time I've definitely grown up meaning spiritually emotionally physically uh, a lot's gone into that 
from my mom yelling at me and my girlfriend getting on me, <laughs> telling me I need to learn, work on certain things. So I feel like that's going to be a good thing for that's helped me get through all that too. When you look at uh, being a student athlete, uh, obviously football is a very taxing sport from a physical perspective. What kind of things do you like to do to get yourself out of the, the mindset of working out, of playing football to kind of relax? Um, well, I like to spend a lot of time in the KSAC because trainers are cool to talk to. You can go get treatment. I always talk to the coaches and like just kick it with them all the time up there. And then, honestly, that's about it, really. Do you like video games? Oh, of course. Love What's, Madden. What is it? Madden? Madden, Fortnite, Warzone. You know? <laughs> Typical. Who's your team on Madden? Uh, I'm a big, big DeAndre Hopkins fan, so all, Arizona Cardinals all day long. Do you run with Kyler Murray or do you throw it to DeAndre? How do you work that battle? RPO, baby. RPO. <laughs> Make him stop one of them. Make him stop it. Sprinting out to the right. Evans will chuck it to the right side of the end zone. That is, oh, grabbed by Braxton Westfield. He's got it. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Are you kidding me? Braxton Westfield. When you look at this season and, and having fun with the guys for one final, uh, final ride here uh, on the field, uh, what are your goals for the year? Growing more, growing together as a team having everybody come together and actually become one like Coach Klein wants us to be. We want to be the one that actually makes a difference in Carson Newman at the, at the end of the day. When you look back uh, at your time here, uh, fast forward to the end of the season, what would a successful campaign be like, not only for you, but for the team? Definitely coming back with a championship ring, mm -hmm. whether it's conference or national championships, it, we need one of them. But Personally, I want to come out and be hanging up in the MSAC, wall, hanging on the All-American wall. Braxton, been a pleasure. Best luck this year. Thank you. Thank you. That's Braxton Westfield. I'm Michael Watrang for the Eagle Sports Network. All right. Thank you very much, Michael Watrang. Uh, Mike Clowney, Braxton Westfield uh, on display. Braxton of old, it felt like, against the, the Wolves on Thursday night. Six catches, 60 yards. Definitely the primary target. Uh, and definitely felt like he was the integral part of the game plan. What did you see out of your NFL prospect wide receiver? I mean, I, I, I'm proud of Braxton. You know, we you know, talk about having to throw the ball, throw play, put on catch on first down, you know, get yourself in some manageable situations. You know, watching him compete, you know, on, on that stage, I mean, you know, he shows that he can compete with just about anybody. Um, I'm excited about the prospects for his future. Uh, it's not often that Carson in football starts the season on the road, just the third time in uh, the last 11 years that the opener has been away from Berktar Stadium, but now you get to come back and open up the doors uh, Saturday at 1 against the Franklin Pierce Ravens. Uh, improvements from this one that you have to apply uh, to a, a program in the, the Ravens, it's pretty brand new, just uh, the depending on whether you want to count COVID third or fourth <laughs> year, uh, the, they've been a collegiate football team transitioning from sprint football. Yeah, I thought that was like the cool concept, them coming from sprint football. So when we started talking to Coach Gaskin about playing this game, like my question was like, what is sprint football? I mean, I thought I had a concept of what it was, but you never, you like never seen it. Yeah. And so just kind of having that conversation where it's basically football with a little wildness. <laughs> you know, so like they've been playing football for a while, so that's why you'll see they've got some quality skilled guys already in place, you know, so I think their big transition was just kind of, you know, fine line. And so, um, you know, them coming in, um, I think is, is, is good for us. You know, it was good in the locker room to hear our guys talk about coming back to the creek. And so I think it's something that we're all looking forward to playing here on Saturday. Mike Clowney, pleasure as always. We'll talk to you next week after a matchup with the Ravens. Thank you. Adam. That's Carson Newman head football coach, Mike Clowney. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Clowney Show. Thanks for watching.